Hello, Merry Christmas. Coming up next is a comedy programme, I Am One, which I'm obliged to tell you contains some colourful language and sketches some may find offensive. Manx Radio has always been at the forefront of the listening revolution, ready to adapt at a moment's notice to a rapidly changing oral landscape and, to quote the latest annual report, extract maximum digital user consumption. Or as the listener put it, pull your finger out, big time. Earlier this year, a new schedule and branding were launched to refresh the image of the station and place it firmly in the 20th century landscape, despite the old package barely having time to bed in with a scant 15 years airplay. The brave new sound of the station was based around the simple but effective model of keeping all the same presenters but putting them on at different times of the day in the hope no one would remember them from the old slots. A new range of collectible merchandise was also made available, including Manx Radio ashtrays, 10 pegs, floppy disks, cassette cases, moon cups and knuckle dusters. And a new tagline introduced, replacing the evergreen Your Happy Listening Station from 1964 with the snappy new slogan for the digital generation, music for your ears from our souls. Let's drop in now on the new breakfast show, which replaced Mandate shortly after the last listener died. The new show mixes economic gloom, global warming, stories of extreme poverty and desperation, racial abuse, planning catastrophes and corruption with news from off-island. All glued together with a viscous goo of weather, obituaries, the Pet Shop Boys, business figures, George Michael, the Sports Second and a new feature, Where the F***'s Watton, which has already proved to be extremely popularist. And it's time now to play Where the F***. Watton. So if you're a new listener, that's the part in the programme where Alex leaves me in order to hide somewhere. That's right, and it could be on the Isle of Man, Calf of Man, around the northwest of Britain, continental Europe, the Middle East, Asia, Africa, the Sub-Sahara, India, Australasia, Antarctica, Russia, the United States, Colby... Anywhere in the world, basically. That's right, but don't worry, because I'll be giving you clues to my whereabouts. Well, last week we failed to find you after your clue. I'm somewhere close to a large body of water, but not somewhere many people go on purpose. I thought that might have been a a bit of a giveaway, actually. Well, David from Onken thought you might have been at the Murrock Park in Ramsey, a thought echoed by quite a few others. But it wasn't the right answer, I'm afraid, nor was Port Sodrick. So, Alex, put us out of your misery. Where the f***? was Watson. I was beside the Adar Lake in southern Uzbekistan. I did wonder about Central Asia when you said a large body of water. It's a wonder we couldn't find you. Well, I was hiding behind a bush as well. Oh, yes, that's it. Great. Well, where are you hiding this week? I'm not telling you, obviously. Super. Right, well, I'll count to a thousand and off you go. OK, bye. Bye, everyone. See you next week. Well, there she goes. Right, let's play. Where the f***'s Watton? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Oh, let's take a commercial break. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. I've got a question for you. What can be black? White, Persian, Oriental, unique, extremely useful, warm, sometimes beautiful, or just shaggy. Give up? They're immigrants to the island. See our extensive collection in shops in Douglas, Castletown, Port Erin, Peel, Kirkmichael, Ramsey, Jerby, banks, care homes, trust companies, e-gaming firms, car washes, farms, cleaning firms, lawyers, local authorities, garden centres, pubs, hotels, restaurants and schools. Try one today. They're like Manx workers, only better. And fantastic value. Immigrant workers. They speak your language. And probably several others. Where shall we eat? Mm. Somewhere clean and convenient. Mm. Somewhere you can enjoy contemporary cooking every day. Mm. Somewhere with a friendly atmosphere and people you know. Mm. Somewhere where the food is just what you want, when you want it, and in quantities you can manage. Mm. Somewhere where you know it's always value for money. Mm. Somewhere you can belch and fart loudly at the end of the meal without embarrassment. (gasps) Or take your coffee and the paper through to the bog without anyone looking. Somewhere you can get pissed out your mind and not have to worry about driving. Mm. Mm. Where is this? That's right, at home. Mm? Tasty food, which is just like homemade, because it is.
I joined Onken Commissioners when I was 55. I don't know why they picked on me. I was always scared and worried. Even at home, they'd message me all the time about how I'd vote on minor planning applications or whether the civic service should be held on a Wednesday or a Thursday. I just wanted to hide. But coming to Commissioner Support turned my life around. I feel better, stronger. I know I can get past this. No Commissioner should face fear alone. For help, contact Commissioner's Support. Music to your heart from our souls. The Nation Station, Manx Radio. Hello, I'm Andy Wint, and this is The Gamelin Line. 60 minutes of news, views, and great traditional music from Bali, Java, and Indonesia. Today, Southern MHK Jason Moorhen talks in depth about his 47 questions in this week's key sitting while playing the triangle. We'll have business or at least news of someone who's changed a desk in an office on Athol Street, the weather read by an annoying toddler and the sports second with Chris Cave. But first, let's kick things off with Ida Widawati and the Gamelan classic Sanko Ratu Kulu Kulu Gangkang Gamelang. And he's followed by an exciting new show during the late lunch period, which after extensive and in-depth research carried out by an off-island firm of market researchers has been called Late Lunch. It's presented by Beth Wispy and a couple of others and follows in the footsteps of the much maligned Women Today programme, which featured a unique mix of camp pop music and discussions about terminal diseases and was seen very much as a one-off. The same two words were used to sum up the audience size and reaction. Hello and welcome to another Late Lunch with me, Beth Wispy. Me, Christy de Havilland Vickers. And me, a token man. It's basically me with a couple of others, but I'm in charge. And today we're playing What's My Jaffa? This is the radio equivalent of What's My Line, except with citrus fruit rather than professionals. So let's get ready to play. If you've not played before, I take a citrus fruit out of my healthy lunchbox. Mine's healthy too. Yes. I've got sandwiches. Not now. So I take a citrus fruit from my lunchbox and bounce it on the desk. And all you've got to do is identify the fruit from the sound it makes. It could be a grapefruit, a blood orange. Give it away, why don't you? Are you ready? Do you want to hear it again? Uh, Well... Here we uh, go, then. I think it's quite a tricky one today. Should we hear it one more time? No. And a few of you have texted in. By few of you, I mean one. Dadsy says, is it a pomelo? It's not. You're wrong as usual. Text 166177 if you think you know the answer. Or oh, email me at studio at manxradio.com and the first winner I like the look of will win a Manx Radio Moon Cup. Here's the latest from Pickety Witch. It's not just the programmes during the day which have been changed. The specialist music programmes, unaltered since the end of the Napoleonic Wars, have also had a revamp. Hello, I'm Morris Powell. Welcome to A Little Light Death Metal. Tonight on the programme, we'll be hearing from one of my favourites, and I hope they're one of yours too, Cannibal Corpse, with a really lovely arrangement of their classic anthem, Frantic Disembowelment, from the charming Wretched Spasm album. We also have a little Morbid Angel and some Suffocation, an a cappella version of the Two Little Herd, in my opinion, Meat Hook Sodomy. That's from an old LP I have of Butchered at Birth, so stay with me, it's not as kitsch as it sounds. But to get us going this evening, a little carcass and a stirring rendition of Captive Bolt Pistol. We'll hear more from the new specialist music programme shortly. The weather hasn't been immune to the changes on Manx Radio, and like the weather itself is now presented in a way which is both extremely dodgy and generally rubbish. Time for a look at the weather, which today is just one word in the form of a riddle, which we hope is both more entertaining and cheaper than the old weathermen. And woman. Yes, and woman. It's read to us today, like lots of Manx Radio's adverts, by an annoying toddler. My first is in rubber, but not PVC. My second in umbrella, but not in pea. My third in banana, but not in a quack. My fourth is in wombat, but never in shack. My fifth found in shingles, but not in obscene. Then in 
botulism, but not in ice cream. My seventh is in lucid, but not found in bike. I don't have an eight, so make up what you like. And if you haven't worked it out yet, you can find out more by simply clicking on breakfast on the Manx Radio website. Click on it again. Click home. Click on programs. Click on news. Click on current affairs. Click breakfast weather. Click which day you want. Click on yes when it asks you if you're sure. And click on weather now for weather today. And you can see more on how to do that on the Manx Radio Twitter feed. Time now for the sports second with Chris Caves. Manx Radio Sport football now thanks chris and there's another sports second at lunchtime but now on smartphones those annoying speakers which spout bollocks you don't want crappy little radios which hook on your ear only get am yet still cost a tenner and overpriced ipads it's time for the news in full that's 90 seconds from the isle of man and 20 seconds for the rest of the world with sean cowper or am i sean more am I, Alex. More am I, Ben. More am I, Sean. More am I, everyone. More am I. More am I. There's a yellow weather warning in place today for an amber weather warning later on. Tim Glover has more. Much more. The yellow warning from the Met Office is for winds entirely in line with the season. However, by 2pm there's the possibility of an amber warning, meaning gusts high enough to flatten pensioners wandering aimlessly around looking for an open post office within a 10 mile radius of where they live and blow small children over hedges. The steam packet has already said if the boat does sail it may sink, but a final decision on that will be made by a government boat later. At Ronaldsway, planes are taking off a lot faster than usual and the Northern Civic Amenity site is closed, but that's hardly news. However, with some six months to go, TT organisers say it's still too early to say if racing will be delayed. The Transport Minister has denied suggestions that digging up the entire promenade at once was bad planning. The Dalai Lama was reacting to criticism from everyone else on the island who suggested it would have been better to have done it in sections. His Magnificence claimed the department was using advanced methods based on chaos theory, in which it's claimed if a road closed sign is waved in Gansey, there will be a storm of road rage in Colby. He went on to say the promenade contractors were trialling what he referred to as universal rather than progressive annoyance techniques, in which everyone is massively inconvenienced simultaneously for a long time, rather than just a few at a time suffering over a shorter period. The Education Minister says he's delighted that the Guinness Book of Records have officially recognised a recent attempt by his department to set a new world record for the highest number of angry and pissed-off teachers in one building. Graham Craig Willies was speaking after over 800 teachers crammed into a meeting at the Mount Murray, normally attended by just three union members. It's the second time Mr Craig Willies has put the island in the record books after it was confirmed that the ongoing NSC pool refurbishment had been recognised as being of world-beating incompetence. Just time for a sports second with Chris Cave. Chris? Harlequins 2, Camogs... Thanks, Chris. That's the news for now. More in an hour. In the meantime, to keep up to date, just stare at your phone endlessly and ignore your family and children. This is Terry Kringle. This week on The History Man, I'm returning to my youth and a story about a young girl called Eve. She lived with me in the garden and I used to rib her mercilessly. Then one day she went scrumping from a tree we weren't supposed to touch, and all hell was let loose, and from then on we had to cover our bits and pieces with nettle leaves, which was no fun, I can tell you. That's Terry and Eve in the Garden of Eden on The History Man this Sunday at 10.30am, and AM, FM, and available to buy on Wax Cylinder. In keeping with Max Radio's bold transformation strategy, the exact same presenters have been instructed to do exactly the same thing, only in slightly different time slots. One of the Max Radio stalwarts to benefit from this change is Stu Peters, who's had his coveted midday phone-in programme, Talking Crap, moved to the coveted midnight slot. This is a coup for Stu, who's glad of the extra 12 hours in bed. It also better suits his usual audience of weirdos, social outcasts and pissheads. The post-watershed slot also allows him greater freedom to tackle the issues others are too afraid to talk about. And he continues to rile up the snowflakes, like Jeremy Clarkson burping an impression of Nigel Farage. Even on Christmas Eve, he was in full flow. 
and, 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 and another thing, Stu, I've I seen, I seen before they want to, to ban Christmas pudding now over health and, and safety fears. I, 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 I tell you what, it's, it's, all, it's all gone a bit too far now. When I was a lad, I was always choking on six and it? it never did me no harm. Oh, no. I was blood in that one. No, I quite agree with you there, Timmy. It seems like they're wanting to ban anything remotely fun nowadays, and it gets right up my goat, to be honest. Imagine being such a snowflake that you get offended that easily. No, oh, boils my blood, it really does. Anyway, that's all we have time for on this episode of Talking Crap. After the Christmas break, we'll be back and debating whether bringing back national service could cure rampant transgenderism, and I'll be asking you whether school children are getting uglier. But in the meantime, Merry Christmas. And so Ebenezer Stew headed home for the holidays, looking forward to his Findus ready meal Christmas dinner the next day. But late in the night, as the snowflakes fell offendedly outside and Stew slept restfully, he was paid a supernatural visit. What in the name of... Who the hell are you? I am the ghost of Christmas past. You look more like that little wrong and Greta what's-her-face to me. Shouldn't you be in school? Stu, our planet is facing extinction. I have come to show you the error of your ways. Oh, have you? Well, I'm not interested, love. This climate change malarkey is just a conspiracy so those Soros-loving elites can tax us to high heaven. Go on, do one. Stu! Stu! John, who are you supposed to be? Uh, my name is Ahmed. Uh, I am a refugee from the ongoing war in Syria. I, I, I have come to... Oh, yeah, and who let you in? Tell you what, this country's going to the dogs. More bleeding-heart liberal nonsense. Stu! Stu! Buster? Yes, Stu, it's me. I've come to warn you about stealth taxes and the bloated civil sector and their fat cat pensions. Well, the three of you can sod off. I've seen this Dickensian tosh before. I suppose you'll be after some sort of epiphany from me, will you? Well, let me tell you what, it ain't happening. It's political correctness gone bloody mad again. Now sling your hooks before I call the Ghostbusters. Yo, if you do not heed our warnings, then the Earth, as we know it, will be irreversibly changed for the worse. Oh yeah, sounds like Project Fear all over to me. Very well. If you shall not listen, then we must compel you. And how do you plan to do that? Uh, we'll show you the latest range of figures. Still Peters, the nation station, men's radio. Hello and welcome back to Talking Sense, the all-new talk show with me, Stu Peters. Namaste. Coming up in this hour, why the Manx government should double its foreign aid budget, why now is the time to ditch your gas guzzler and make the switch to an electric vehicle, and we'll be running down the best meat-free alternative vegan superfoods. But let's go to our switchboard and take another call. Is anyone there? No? Okay. (sighs) Sod this, I'm off for a soy latte. Hello again, and welcome to the all-new, all-tuneful Time for Brass Rubbing. And welcome also to the all-new Manx Radio. I'm Ian Cottier, and this is Time for Brass Rubbing. All your favourites from Black Dyke, the Foden's Works Band, Russian Silver, Wheel Tappers and Shunters, and also the newly formed Ramsey Dykes Band whilst reproducing onto paper commemorative plaques from the 13th and 16th century. And we're starting off today with the Brighouse and Rastrick take on the floral dance from 1976. Would you believe that, 1976? Whilst you hear a recording from last summer of me rubbing Shottersbrook Man at the Church of St John the Baptist in Devon. 
Following his near daily appearances on Manx Radio, Reform and Policy and Change and Transformation and then Change It Again Minister Chris Thomas has been given the green light to further his radio career. Here he is at home presenting his new foodie feature, Cooking the Books, where Mr Thomas presents recipes suitable for all occasions, be it cross-government, quasi-anonymous, interdepartmental working groups, to a late-night treat for when you're reviewing draft legislation at home. Hello everybody, members of the public valued stakeholders and declining listenership. Today I'm going to be showing you a favourite of mine which I like to rustle up for friends in Douglas, Onkun and Braddon. Like most of my choice dishes it's not a simple one and requires around 450 reading hours of preparation and even more ingredients. Yes, today we're going to be baking an eastern area flan. First, you want to take a fresh public consultation. If you can get one with a low number of respondents, that's best. Yes, just break it up in your hand and into the bowl, then dilute the consultation with a pint of rhetoric. Now, some people like off the shelf, but I use my own, it's always better. Now mix that together and you should see the consultation start to lose its original shape. Once that begins to happen, you need to add more than a bag and a half of developer interest, take a pinch of genuine resident concern, jumble it together, place the mixture in the oven, max gas mark eight for the over 75 minutes. Simple. Speaking Manx now with Mish Mercer. Well, well, hey, well, hey, one yeah, Mish. It's almost Christmas. Ah, yes, Nolik Gennel. What? Nolik Gennel. You're not well. No, I'm, I'm just saying it's that time of year. Nolik Gennel. He's swearing. No, I'm, I'm saying... No, 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 don't translate. We're still before the watershed. Just tell us, how do you say festive in Manx? Well, it's a, an unusual word. I expect nothing less. Uh, left the sigh, with a, with a hard I sound at the end, like in the word ink. Yes, yeah. What's the etymology of that? Oh, I've no idea. You, you'd have to ask Adrian Kane. Does he know? I doubt it. Oh, never mind. What about season? What's that in Manx? Well, th- that I do know. The simple noun, rian, spelt R-I-A-N. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. The, so- the sort of name you'd think the presenter of Time for Brass and Manx Radio's netball correspondent might give a love child in the unlikely event of that happening. Hmm. Uh, now, the useful phrase at this time of the year, to the world... How would that be constructed in the island's native tongue? Uh, rustically, it, w- it would be wallman. The wall part would be the ancient native island's belief, still in use today in some government circles, that there's an invisible barrier between the Isle of Man and everywhere else, really. And men comes from the old Celt menunda, meaning go away. So uh, a literal translation would actually read something like, we're hidden, bog off. I guess that was a long time ago. 1979. Uh, And the pronoun this, what would that be in in the sentence here? Uh, um, Un. Um, um, Un. No, 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 just un. I was was thinking. Oh, right, right. Now, what about a message? How would one say that in Max? Hmm, It's dwilt, like wilt with a a d at the beginning, d, you know. So is there a message for me would be tamieda dwilt. Tamieda dwilt. Government, we've we've had that in the past quite, quite often. Yeah. Not not just like the rubbish we've got in now. No, no, I, I meant the word. Oh, oh, yes, yeah. Well, we have, but in this case, with it being used during the festive season, it would be corrupted into the word fangu. Why is that? Oh, well, I think it's because most of the government would be so far gone on free corporate and expenses knees ups at this time of year. It was one of the few words they could get out, you know, or want to hand up, mister, you seem to have fallen. Thank you. That sort of thing. Uh, How about the question, what's the, another common one? Yes, indeed, yeah, yeah. Uh, Peace honour. That goes back to the ancient peat wars between the Manx and the people from Brittany, in which women would frequently be caught in the crossfire and set alight by mistake. In an emergency, this would be the instruction from the French medics to put them out. Heavens. So, 
if we put what we've learnt today together,、uh, yes, yeah. How would you say? What's the government message to the world this festive season? Well,、uh, well it would be、uh, p- peace on earth and goodwill to all men, unless they're Syrian. More next time. Where? Carol Carail. What? Now, on late lunch, regular listeners will know that for the last few weeks we've been getting out into the community to spread some Christmas cheer to those who need it most. Today, we've got something special lined up. We've got the Lagan Community Choir ready and waiting up at Nobles Hospital Accident and Emergency Department, and they're going to sing a few carols for the patients. Let's join them live now. Are you ready, guys?、Um, it's quite busy up here.、Uh, excuse me. Sorry. The doctor will see you now, Mr. Kegan.、Um, this one is called. Oh dear, that's quite a serious rupture.、Uh, is he going to be okay? He, he's lost quite a lot of blood. Should we get going, Neil? Uh, uh, yeah, yes. This one's called Silent Night. Medics on standby, please. Medics on standby. We've got unconfirmed casualties and a tram pile up at the bungalow. And a one, two, three. Silent night. Baby won't stop being sick. Code seven. Code seven. Prepare the defibrillators. Clear. 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 The Lagan Community Choir. Everyone. <clears throat> It's almost time for bed, but one politician turned radio celebrity chef has snuck down to the kitchen for a late night snack. Oh, hello! You've just caught me preparing my favourite midnight snack: draft legislation. With a generous helping of more than a hundred clauses for consideration. <laughs> oh, I'm a naughty Thomas. And so we head into a brave new era of Manx Radio's history, which, like so many before it, will bring pleasure and pain in equal measure. Will it work? Only time will tell. So keep listening, and we thank you. Thank you for listening to the music going into your ears, out of our souls. Nine hundred eighty-eight, nine hundred ninety-nine, one thousand. Coming, Alex. Ready or not? Now, are you under the desk? No.、Uh, behind the chair? No. You're not there either. Well, text one double six one double seven if you think you know where the f- is Watton. And remember, you could win a set of Manx Radio tent pegs. Are you in here? No. Are you anywhere outside, looking out of the window? Oh, for God's sake! I am one five was written by Edwina Roach, Axel Belt, Vice Crash, and We and Nor. And it was performed by them with great help from Bite Sheep, Chanty Dervish, Andy Hakes, Veins Rain, Neatly Herb, Latex Knopwo, Salalic Winds, Tiny Wand, Lodia Q Map, Erotica Knit, Vaulty Germ, and Snowier Cap. It was produced by Axel Belt and was a four wise men production for Manx Radio, though one of them 
is going missing.